it's Kelly with Embroidery Nurse. So I thought we'd do something a little different today and just come on and have a Sunday sit down where we can kind of go over some questions that people have been asking me in the comments of my recent videos. And hopefully that will help other people that probably have some of the same questions as well. So let's get started. I picked 10 and thought we'd kind of go over those. And if you have more questions, I'd love for you to comment on really any of the videos, but you can answer, comment below and maybe I can answer yours next week. So let's start. Karen Strickman asked, when you started, how did you know how many items to start with or keep on hand? And I will say this has evolved, Karen, over time. I really didn't know in the beginning what to have on hand or what to sell, to be honest with you. I didn't know what was going to be my best seller. The very first um, October of 2018, when I started posting on Etsy, I didn't realize that, uh, you know, my the random embroidered apron set that I was selling was going to be my top seller that year, right? So in 2018, that was my top seller. I couldn't have projected that in the beginning. Um, so you just kind of have to see what takes off. But when it comes to keeping like blanks, when it comes to like t-shirts, I do a lot of um, holiday shirts, birthday shirts, newborn gowns and whatnot, appliques. I started to keep white only, um, two of every size. Now I do three styles. There's a ruffled girl shirt, there's a cap sleeve girl shirt, and then a unisex boys or girl shirt. And for me, keeping two of each size in the beginning worked really well white only. I couldn't keep every color because man, these blanks companies are rocking it when it comes to colors and there's just too many to keep on hand. There just are too many to keep on hand. So white for me has worked. As my business grew, I started keeping more than just two. I would keep like five of every size. And then I started seeing the trends. 3T and 4T for me sell out all the time. So I keep more of those on hand than I do like the size 12 shirts with girls. I don't sell as many of those. So you'll learn what becomes trends for your business, but I do recommend if you can have a small inventory of shirts on hand, if that's something that you're going to be doing a lot. Um, Rich Him, he asks, what external hard drive brand do you use and recommend? I have mine right here. My computer's right here next to me. The biggest piece of advice is just make sure you have one. Y'all, my computer crashed two years ago and it was devastating. Oh my goodness. You never think it's going to happen to you, right? Like you just never think that you hear stories and you've heard plenty of people in the embroidery world, I hope, say, back up your drive, back up your, your files, back up everything. And I had not done that. I just, you know, I just thought, you know, it's not going to happen to me. My computer's new and I know what I'm doing. I mean, come on. But no, it, it crashed. But thankfully, another thing that I had invested in is the Geek Squad. They have at Best Buy, if you have one near you, Geek Squad, you can pay $199 a year and they will help you with all your tech needs, not just computer, but anything for a year, any question you have. And I feel like they're like my right hand peoples when something's going on with my phone, with my projector, with my computer, with anything. So it's been a well, you know, worth it, you know, the, the $199. And that year specifically, they saved my behind because they were able to literally pull off from a computer that would not even turn on. They were able to pull off all my embroidery files and salvage them and put them on an external hard drive for me. The one I have though, which was your question, this is called My Passport. And it's actually has so much storage in here. Like he said, I would probably never be able to fill it, which doesn't know me, but My Passport, it, I just bought it from Best Buy and it was the only one that was recommended to me. And I can't say that this is greater than the next. I just really, truly recommend you got to have one. Um, having two would even be better. One that you just kind of upload every you know week to and then the other one, which I use for everything um, to have on hand. So that's advice. Please make sure you have one and back up all your files. Okay, Cindy Winky, from the time you learned to embroider, when did you start your business? So Cindy, in 2016 is when I brought, bought my first machine. I bought it from a... Um, like the marketplace, basically Facebook marketplace, buy, sell, trade page in my neighborhood. Someone was selling a four by four machine and I bought that. It intimidated me to no end, to no end. And I stared at that thing for six months before I even turned it on. And then I didn't know once I turned it on how to get anything that I made from my computer to the machine. I didn't know what program to buy. So that's why I'm here for you guys. I mean, honestly, I want to help you because I didn't feel like there was anyone in the beginning to help me get started. And I want to take some of that away from those that want to start embroidery these days. 
But so 2016, I bought the first machine and from there I moved up and I've moved up now to three different machines that I have pre presently. So I will say I started posting on Etsy in 2018 um, and that was after a successful year of just um, selling on Facebook Marketplace or Facebook, my Facebook group. And um, Etsy started in late 2018. And so about two and a half years I've been on there and I do have a full-time um, embroidery business now. Okay, let's see, Shirley Hopner has, are we allowed to use licensed fabric with our creations? So yes and no. You've seen the licensed fabrics, you can buy them online, you can buy them at Hobby Lobby, you can buy them at Michael's, and you can use them to make something for your daughter, your niece, your nephew, for your grandchildren, but you cannot sell them. So yes, you can use them, you can make cute shirts with them, but you cannot use them to sell. So it's kind of confusing, and I'm kind of like, man, if you can buy it, why can't you use it? Why do they even sell it? But that's how that works. So good question. Um, Sally Ross says, how do you get photos for your monograms and fonts without the watermarks? Everything I purchase has the company logo through it. So Sally, I'm actually going to post up here in the comments or up here, wherever, la la land. And I've made a video on exactly how to do that. I used in Brilliance Essentials, which is my, um, software that I use for all my monograms and all my designs. And I was able just to literally type out every single font that I use and create a page that I could share with customers. So definitely go watch this video. It goes step-by-step step through the computer and everything. And I think it'll be really helpful. Good question. Amanda, Amanda says, are blanks better than the store? You know, Amanda, it's kind of up to you to determine what works best and what you like the most. But I would say my answer to that is yes. I use Blanks Boutique, ARB Blanks, and love that cotton. I buy from them three plus times a week, honestly. All three of them have just amazing quality. You can buy things, you know, last minute if you have to run to Walmart or Hobby Lobby or Michaels or wherever around you. Um, I just feel like the consistency of using the blanks, the same ones, you know, all the time is really going to be what makes your business, you know, stand out. Not using something that everyone can go grab at Walmart, you know, making sure you're using the quality that looks good with all embroidery. And there really is a difference. If you've ever embroidered on a Carter, Carter onesie, compare it to a, a boutique brand onesie and you'll never go back. Um, it just looks nicer, it stitches nicer, and I just highly recommend it. So I do think buying from the Blanks companies is the way to go. All right, oh, two questions from Amanda. Um, she said, I'm very new to this and I have a PE 800 and I'm still learning. Did you start with what you have now? And that's a big no. Uh, I'm looking into a bigger machine, want to work more than a five by seven, but until then I'll have to master what I have. Things are hard to center. Of course they're hard to center with a five by seven machine, but I guarantee you once you're able to master that, you'll, you will just soar when it comes to your embroidery. Be, be putting them on machines like this after you have, you know, painstakingly sat by and babysat your items on a smaller machine, you know, these will be nothing to you. So um, I, I wish you the best. I hope your business continues because I do think investing in a multi-needle machine when you get to that point is the way to go because it really will cut out time, cut out some frustrations, and it's just an easier machine to work with. But where you're at right now is where you're supposed to be. So just keep working hard. And if you have questions, then certainly let me know. I still, to this day, and, and I, I did when I had my single needles, I print out all my designs and in Brilliance, it has a grid line. And with that grid line, I match up the uh, needle right above the top of that grid. That way I know that I have it in the center of my design at all times. So certainly there's some videos that show that I've made and others have made. And I'll try to link one up here um, about how to make sure on your shirt that it's centered and everything. Um, so hopefully you can watch those, but just keep at it. Keep working. You're doing great. Okay, Linda Goodson. I love your videos. They're so helpful. And one of them you talked about a couple of digitizers you've trusted, and now I can't find the link. Um, so honestly, find one that works good for you. Try some out. See, you know, get what you return. Um, I've used Stevo. Um, and I will put his information down below. He's done a great job for me, has a really quick turnaround, and I use them when someone has something specific that they sent me that they would like to have on an item. Could be their company logo they have permission to um, use for something. So I'll link them below, um, but just try, try some of you out and see what you think. Um, it, it's a good thing to have in your back pocket to have someone that you can work with along the way. All right, Mr. Hollick says, 
Um, I have a single needle and I just don't know what to make and where to start. I think Etsy might be good, but I don't know how to actually break in and doing it for money. I've only just begun. So awesome. Congratulations. We're glad to have you in this crazy world of machine embroidery. But let me tell you, you start local. Local is the way to go. Now, you might not live in an area that has a lot of need or wants for monograms, appliques, and whatnot. I live in the South. So, man, every, there could be somebody that does embroidery in every neighborhood, two or three, and, and we would all do fine. Um, so, I, I do suggest doing local. You can post things on Facebook. You can post things not to your personal page. I would make one specific just for your embroidery. Uh, make a Facebook group, a Facebook um, page send it to marketplace, things that you, you know, have made, make samples. That's always good to have. Local craft shows are good to start off with, but without doubt, Etsy is the easiest user-friendly platform. So I would highly suggest starting with that. It's super easy to get going. You can start with one, two, three postings. Um, I would suggest to as quickly as you can build up the number of postings you have in your shop so that you are seen, you know, more often and can increase the, you know, the sales that you have. Anytime anyone, you make any, something for anyone, anytime anyone orders something for you, take a picture of that because that can be a picture that you can later use for your listings. Even if you're not at the point where you're ready to list on Etsy or anywhere or any platform like that, definitely take pictures of every single thing you make. Invest in a backdrop, take a picture of it. Take 10 minutes at the end of every day with any creation that you've made and make a nice picture of that because you will use it. You will be so thankful you have it later on. So good luck to you and let us know what kind of questions you have moving forward. Um, Danielle 81, L Danielle 81. I just started watching your videos and recently decided to stop being a scary cat and open an Etsy store. Do you think that having a YouTube channel is needed nowadays to have a successful Etsy when you're starting? And without doubt, no. You don't need to have anything to do with YouTube. It's not, it, I, my YouTube has nothing to do with my Etsy sales. Um, YouTube, I use to help teach others. My Etsy is where I make my creations and I, that's where my business is. So two very separate things. But you brought up a good point and that's why I wanted to answer your question here. Um, social media is huge when it comes to success of your store. I would without doubt highly encourage you to set up Facebook page, Facebook group, an Instagram account, Pinterest, those three specifically are what I use and what I would recommend. Um, of course, there's some other platforms you can use these days, TikTok and all that stuff, and I just haven't gotten into those. Now, if you are good on those, use them. Um, but the three that I use, since you're asking, are um, Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. You know, put take just a couple of minutes a day, post something that you made on your Instagram account that's specific to your business. Pay, post something in your Facebook group that's specific to your business um, and, and just kind of get engagement that way. And, and I think you will see an increase. You can link your items from your Etsy shop there. And then you can actually see in your Etsy, you know, where people have come from. So you can see, oh, you know, I had eight visits from my Pinterest page today. And so that can kind of motivate you to see where you're bringing in customers and that can tell you where you need to spend more time on. So good question, but I would definitely recommend social media for boosting your Etsy sales. Um, last question, um, Teresa Little Loopy Loo says, I noticed in another of your videos, you use the derpy hoop for shirts. Do you prefer it over the ones that came with your machine? And uh, I don't know if you can see it there, but yes, I use my derpy nine by nine hoop for all of my applique shirts. And it has just been the best size. It's perfectly square, which I love. And I use it literally from 12 month shirts all the way up to 12 shirts for, for girls, boys, whatnot. Um, and it fits everything that I've ever needed to put in there. So, you know, you can put the five by seven design with the name under it. You can merge different things. And that size is absolutely perfect. The ones that came with my machine are all rectangular in size. So the square is what works really, you know, best for me. There's plenty of other, you know, ones to try, Mighty Hoops and whatnot. I've heard are wonderful as well. And I think I will test those out soon just to give it a try. But Durky 9x9 is my go-to for all my appliques. Hope this helped, guys. If it did, if you found any value in this, I'd love for you to like the video, subscribe, click that bell for notifications so you can see when we do this again. And I'll try to sit down, you know, every week or two and just answer some questions um, for everyone. And um, hopefully we'll all learn in the end from things that others are asking. So hope you all have a great week stitching and we'll talk to you soon.